Hello everybody and here with the Hammer Game Channel and welcome back to TNO and to the start of a new playthrough. And yes, we are playing as the incompetent boys themselves, the Italians. So we're going to have a wee read of this because I want to see what the lore is behind and also the features. Um, I do know which way I'm taking the Italians anyways, it's just a matter of figuring out how to get to the point that I need to get to. Anyways, how does one begin to describe the Italian Empire? Birthplace of fashion, conqueror of Jerusalem, hegemon of the horn, lord of the Suez, the fourth world power. And how can one possibly describe? Uh, Galizo Cano? Cano? The man systematically tear it all down. Second World War saw Italy transcend from kingdom to empire, conquering from lands British, French, Albanian and Yugoslav alike. Many wondered in those days how far Italy would rise in the gaze of Benito Mussolini. It seemed almost inevitable that it would grow to join the ranks of the um, Burgoning superpowers of the United States, the Greater German Reich and the Empire of Japan, a fourth superpower bound tightly in a friendship with Germany, which would surely see the spread of fashion worldwide. The 50s saw this dream of Mussolini's trans uh, transform into a nightmare from which the country still has not yet fully woken. Strong armed for into aiding the Alantropa project by Germany, Italy's coast was ravaged and the Adriatic destroyed, making way for nigh useless salt plains. The economic crash that swept from Germany into Europe decimated Italy's struggling economy and then finally, when the Germans had the goal to attempt to drag Italy into a war against the resurgent Russia, Mussolini had decided Italy would no more suffer under German treachery. The empire would withdraw from its alliance with Germany, open its borders to those in the Reich that sought refuge, political prisoners, escaped prisoners and more fled to Italy. As the 50s wore on, Mussolini's decisions grew more erratic and unpredictable as the deuce aged. He moved against the king, Umberto II de Savoy, and very nearly plunged the country into a civil war in an attempt to dispose of the monarchy. The only thing stopped him was his son-in-law, uh, Galiz. I'm just going to call him Gal. Uh, a devout fascist. Or Cano. I'll call him Cano. Uh, nevertheless, washed with growing horrors, Mussolini's policies plunged the empire into a greater economic ruin and political strife. He stepped in between the king and the Ducey's political rivalry, convincing his father-in-law to forfeit the struggle to end the monarchy. Some say the Ducey's death some days later was a mere coincidence. Some say uh, Gano, Gano took the safety from Italy into took the safety of Italy into his own hands. Whatever the case, Ildus was dead, and Cano has risen to take his place. New Dusses immediately began to uh, liberalize liberalize the empire, not out of dedication to democracy, but out of sheer pragmatism. Fascism, at least the methods of Mussolini had employed, had failed. Uh, Cano's form, uh, reforms walked down on racial laws, walked back on racial laws brutal colonial systems, and perhaps more, most importantly, the suppression of Italian democracy. Spurred on by King Umberto II, the Deuce has slowly but surely began to reintroduce democratic systems to Italy's people, and even as a hardliner in the PNF, bluster and grumble, the massive Italy had begun to turn away from fascism. Yet this bloodshed, bloodless uh, revolution may not, may yet fail. Carlos Scorz, um, Scorza, the ha ad hoc leader of the hardliners of the PNF, stands firmly against Cano's reforms, blocking them when possible and causing public outcry when not. Italian society has become polarized, polarized between the two opposites, their former liberalization of Cano or the hard light fashion of Scorza. Tensions have reached the boiling point. The empire stands at the crossroads. Either democracy will rise from the ashes as a phoenix, brighter than ever before, or be stomped out into dust, never again to light Italy's way. So, features. Stoke the fires of democracy once more with Italy, bringing an end to fascist tyranny. Triumph over reformism and ensure fascism forever retains its grip in Italy. Manage a massive colonial empire, the fate of its people are in your hands. Okay, I would read the, the region stuff, but yeah, we know what's going to kind of happen in the start. So basically, Italy did stick with the Germans until they took the piss out of them repeatedly. And uh, this is Congress, the Secretary's Congress. Yeah, we're going to be going democratic, so you know, um, we have a nice wee tree to start off with. What we'll start off with is we'll start off with Forza. The primacy of Italy over its empire and its allies must not be ensured through naked cohesion uh, and saber-rattling. Instead, Italy must act as a beacon of stability, prosperity and peace in the Mediterranean and in Europe. We must act to better integrate the various nations under a protective wing into a unified economic and political structure. This is the official party line endorsed by Cano, the current Deus, and while it might have prevailed at this session, it's hard to tell how well this will translate into practice. This event at the Deus' Congress Change the popularity of authoritarian democracy five percent. This will support Cano's or Cano's plan. Right, before research lots to begin with, quite bloody handy. Let's get the improved anti-tank equipment. 
we'll hop in to the doctrine and we'll go for the uh, maneuver warfare stuff the strategic theorem let's hop on into here and we'll go for Yeah, advanced production methods two, I mean one rather, and let's get cons civilian construction two. We start off with an army forty-four divisions strong. Cool, we'll separate them up actually into their uh, regions. So improve them. Okay, right. Actually, we'll have tanks. So the total, the fiat, uh, we'll get the guns. Basic artillery, support equipment, um, basic anti-air. Basic anti. -air. We'll need to get the basic anti-air surely. Then we'll have basic jet fighters, basic jet cas. We'll get some Italo Balbo class. Italo Balbo must be dead possibly. Basic carrier. I don't care about carriers. I just want to cruisers of the battleships. Early battleship. There we go. Oh, nice. We can stick ten factories under them. Nice. Let's, let's just dump it onto you. I don't. I don't know. Actually, Lazio. Well, we've got ten on battleships. If we can get a nice wee destroyer class. Five onto destroyers. Uh, if we go down here and find the submarines, the Marconi, I was going to say Macaroni there. Idiot. Yeah, hope you... Actually, yeah. That'll do. Right, as for the military factories, we'll get... How many how many tank divisions have we got? We only have three, so what we'll do is we'll... I'll stick it like that. Right, free civilian factories. We have a decent number of civvies, but I'm going to go ahead and build another nine of them to begin with. There we go. Empire management. Okay, we have we have some stuff here. We have oh my gosh, we have a lot of stuff here. Okay, what are we missing? Basic anti-air, good, we don't need basic anti-air. Bin it. Insufficient resources, oh gosh, steel. Um, we'll trade with the, uh, I don't really want to trade with Germans. Wait, we only have five civvies built in? Oh crap. I can't really afford for sending all those. Right, we'll operate it. That efficiency right now. Anyway, so let's let's continue on. But first, actually, the Italian eagle has won the stretches proudly from the slopes of Kilimanjaro to the harsh colds of the Alps, having conquered for herself a massive and wealthy empire through the carnage of two world wars. Will the third domains? Italy was slink back to being a second-rate power. However, for as great and mighty as the empire is, it certainly spread itself thin. Budget drains, garrison issues, and many more have hindered its ability to exert force. Not to expand, not patch. These cracks will only grow. Expendable points too. Okay, the best of enemies since World War Two, the Italian armed forces have been split into the Marcus faction supporting King Vittorio Emmanuel and the fascist faction supporting Mussolini. With the war over, tensions be between the two camps have begun to build up. When monarchists gravitated more and more towards Kino and his reformist ideals, and the fascists looking for the favor towards Carlos Gorza, the two factions find their rallying point respectively. In Sogno, the influential diplomat and former officer of the Regio Esirto, and Junio Valerio, Portuguese head of the legendary Vesima Fotiglia MAS, depending on the path Italy chose to take, allowing an unfriendly faction dominating the armed forces could have a catastrophic result. Okay, that's fine. Total project points. So Italy has always been a barren land, devoid of much of. Okay. And this will be our. Despite being one of the victors in the last World War in the Fourth Group, at least it lacks a nuclear arsenal of our own. New expert for. Oh my gosh. 
And then whatever the hell that is. Right, anyways. Session XXXIII of the Grand Council of Fashion has started at the Plazio della Franicia in Rome. A journalist and policeman swarmed around politician ministers entering the austere rationalist building. With delegates and representatives from all the upper echelons of fascist governments gathered in the eternal city, the deuce took the floor to address the numerous problems faced by Italy and the Eighth Empire. Despite being the world's fourth superpower, Italy is still plagued by a myriad of issues, both domestic and foreign, including growing dissatisfaction towards the fascist regime and rising dissent in the colonies and puppets making up Italy's empire. Gaines, Gaines' speech was met with thunderous applause from the Grand Council, but one part of the delegates were much colder than others, particularly the current secretary of PNF, Carlo Scorza, and the politicians closer to him within the party are known for their opposition to the dis and rumours seem to imply tensions inside the PNF are growing by the day. Indeed they are. Um, dealing with the Empire. Yeah, we've got a lot of work to do. Equal rights. Empire renewal. Well, this only takes three days. Oh, excuse me. Disgusting. From the person of, uh, you know, a small number of prominent party members and high-ranking officials have gathered to function as an official council of advisors to this, including party politicians like Dino Grande, and generals such as Giovanni De Lorenzo, Lorenzo, yeah. Solidifying and cementing this small clique as the Ducis inner circle will be vital to carrying out Kane's plan. Kano's plan, as fierce opposition from within the ranks of the PNF might at any moment bring the Ducis reforms to a crashing, crashing halt. Gosh, right. What is this? Born on a small state owned oil company in the 1930s, over the decades, the International Hydrocarburi rose to prominence under the guidance of Enrico Mattei, for eventually becoming the largest oil company in the world. Entirely owned by Italian state ENI, is today the economic cornerstone of the Italian Empire, exploiting the vast oil reserves of the numerous countries in Italy's sphere. Investment in the ENI is critical to keep the oil flowing and the Italian economy afloat. However, given the large amount of resources necessary to increase the ENI operations, investments should be pondered carefully. Okay, we can't do any of that anyways right now, but anyways, rubber processing's done. Okay. Right. Despite its facade of order and efficiency, it is well known that the Roman politics are a den of snakes, and while it appears that Cano is firmly at the helm of his nation and his party, in reality, internal opposition is growing stronger and stronger. In a secret meeting at the Plazio Venezia, a small number of high-ranking members of the PNF, as well as some generals from the armed forces, have gathered in Plazio Venezia to speak with the Deuce regarding the situation. Including party politicians like Dino Grande, generals like Giovanni De Lorenzo, and diplomats like Edgardo Socno, this newly formed secret committee will function as Deuce's inner circle to oppose the clique of party politicians gravitating around Carlo Scorza. Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. That is what the saying is, is it not? Let's go ahead and do Impero. Italy currently boasts the world's fourth largest economy and its vast empire and sphere of influence spans over three continents. Focus on proper foreign policy, which in the past has been neglected in favour of the pursuit of autarky, is now necessary to mend the various issues that plague the empire and subjects. Deals with foreign powers, reworked relationships with vassal states, and increased integration into the empire are just some of the problems that have been to be addressed to achieve the prosperity we deserve. Okay, so um, yeah, right. We of course we got the tri triumvirate um, alliance right now, which is obviously going to go down the bloody swanee. Uh, being at the helm of the empire is sometimes not as great as it's made out to be. Something that the Italian government soon discovered not long after the end of the high that followed victory in World War II. When the Italian Empire suddenly expanded to include many more territories and protected states, numerous problems quickly arose, mostly due to unending partisan activity, resistance from subject people, and a slow recovery from the devastation of the war. Alantropa only made things worse, reckoning the economy of numerous nations and forcing Mediterranean trade to be funneled across Suez, the lifeline of the empire. In such a situation, even the most staunch of conservatives can see the writing on the wall and be can convinced that some form of action is needed, especially to amend the poor trade situation and to strengthen the empire in general. This proposed a series of radical changes to the administrative and economic realities of our great empire, and no doubt change shall come. Yeah, I feel like we should probably go ahead and do empire renewal. Our empire is currently a patchwork of directly governed territories such as Montenegro and Albania, military governates such as Levant, public states such as Croatia and Egypt, allies and friendly regimes such as the Arabian monarchies, and even vice royalty, Italian East Africa. Therefore, it should be no surprise that such a vast empire is somewhat disjoint, where we should focus on proven economic and political integration between the various territories under our control. Building more infrastructure, encouraging political reforms, and investing into the more underdeveloped parts of the empire are just some of the things we can do to move closer to achieve a status truly worthy of the name Pax Romana. 
Good. Good, good, good. So, yeah, apologies, guys, but we're going to be doing a lot of reading. I should have mentioned at the start. It's going to be another long playthrough with lots of reading. Gosh, I forgot how much of a mess Russia looks at the start of the game. Um, a new round of meetings are set to take place in the Italian capital as representatives from the local governments of several Italian puppet states and imperial dependencies have gathered to push for new policies to implement across the empire. Delegates from Egypt, led by Commissioner Talo Balbo, oh, Talo Balbo's still here, arrived together with generals from the governments of Levant, followed by a small crowd of politicians and even native representatives from Italian East Africa, all convened in Rome, each hoping to see reforms and changes brought about for their slice of the empire. The path of further, uh, to further cooperation and integration among the various parts of the empire won't be an easy one, as contrasting interests and requests for more autonomy make this endeavour a political nightmare. However, important concessions have already been made by Rome, as Cano renewed promises to increase political autonomy for states under Italian protections, and to loosen the hold the Italian armed forces have over territories like the Levant. Good. Okay. The integration of Libya. End military dominance of Libya. Territories of Libya have been annexed to the Metropolitan Kingdom of Italy in 1934 under the leadership of Governor Italo Babo. Since then, indigenous Arabs who inhabit Libya have been granted the status of Italian Libyan citizens, which gives them a legal status, identical to Italians. However, this legal status is only valid as long as they reside in Libya, and outside of it they are simply colonial subjects of the Crown. The Muslim population of Libya have proved time and time again their loyalty to us, and believe it's time to remove these restrictions and grant the Libyan Arabs the full status of Italian citizens. That's a, that's a good move there. That is a good move. Finish up work in the Persian Gulf. Okay. Their integration of Libya. In a historic turn of events, all the barriers left between Italians and Libyans were torn down by Kano's signature as a new law was approved finally granting Libyans with Italian citizenship. Kano announced this decision by condemning mistakes committed by Italy in the past regarding the Libyan population, referencing the infamous massacres committed in Serenkia in the 1920s, well, I've definitely said that wrong, by the way. At the same time, expressing his hope that this reform is the last act of decades-long integration of Libya within Italy. With the Italian and Arab populations having lived largely in peace for about two decades now, this new law recognises the de facto assimilation of the native Muslim population into the Italian administrative unity. Public opinion has been mixed about this new development, but the Libyan public opinion generally approved the elimination of one of the bureaucratic hurdles that kept them from being considered full Italian citizens. However, many wonder if it is truly enough to contain autonomous and independentist movements from being active in the region, or if this decision might backfire in the future. Who knows? Anyways, the Balkan Initiative. Our holding the Balkans is currently dependent on three things. First, the several regions under our direct control, such as Montenegro, Albania and Dalmasia, which in many cases are inhabited by non-Italian populations, who have expressed discontent at our rule. Secondly, the Kingdom of Croatia, a nominally independent nation, a factually puppet state, dealing with partisan insurgency and Ustasi terrorism. Thirdly, Greece, a state barely holding itself together under the pressure of several well-armed and trained insurgent groups. The situation isn't exactly looking rosy, so addressing our Balkan woes is in order if we don't want the damp peninsula to turn it into a spark that ignites yet another crisis. Yeah, we don't want that. It's such a shame that our faction's going to die. Who knows? We might be able to make another one. Do I want fund the project or fire the current leader? We're working at a sluggish pace. Assassin strikes at Hitler. Do I want to survey the project? Yeah, we'll see what happens with that. I'm interested. When the situation in Croatia becomes even more worrisome, Kino has released a press statement regarding the possibility of a greater involvement of Italian forces in the region. While in the past, the Italian government has always presented its puppet state Croatia as a successful and prosperous country, Kino painted a grim picture of the real situation in the kingdom, citing a recent rise in partisan activity and the ever-present threat of the Utasi. Utasi? Croatia had enjoyed close ties to Italy since World War II, when an Italian king was placed on the throne of the newly created kingdom. However, it seems that soon the country might find itself occupied once again by Italian forces, intervening to shore up the kingdom against insurgent movements. Yeah, this is not good. Anyways, the Algerian summit. Situation in Algeria is, to put it simply, a complete mess. Paid Noir militias, native insurgent groups, and settler defence groups all fight over territory in oil producing regions. All while the whole country is nominally still part in the French state. In the recent years, Algeria became the theatre of low intensity warfare between these different groups, and a steady advance of Iberian soldiers and settlers in the territory is rapidly becoming a source of concern among both the Italian settlers and our military. We must immediately call summit with Iberia to resolve the situation before it escalates. 
Right. Um, yeah, I was going to actually split up the divisions. But with it being so quick. The plans from Iberia and Italy have met in Palermo to discuss the current situation in Algeria. Considering the extremely chaotic and complex situation the region currently is in, the news of the summit ended without any serious accomplishment was taken with no surprise. The poorly defined and porous borders between the military administrations of the two respective countries have done very little to hold the passage of weapons, militias, and smuggled goods from one side to the other. And each country was happy to blame the other for that. Other points of contention included the support and armament of the Pedinoirs. Militias mostly reunited under the site Catholic umbrella organization led by Yves Gurin Serac by Iberia's military government. The Iberian representatives responded by pointing out that the rampant mafia activities in Italian controlled areas and the alleged support given by Italy to Algerian independence groups. Each side ended up denying the other's accusations, but it seems that what truly caused this heated climate, uh, climate was the reports from ENI, the Italian oil company, suggesting that the Algerian region may be rich in oil uh, deposits. With all these overlapping interests in the general instability of the area, many predict that an escalation might be inevitable. Not good. Anyways, crush the Utesa. After Yugoslavia was invaded by the Axis forces in World War II, the independent state of Croatia was established as a kingdom in the Italian sphere of influence. With Amon de Savoy of Osta ruling as King Tomislav II. However, real power in the country was in the hands of the Utesa, a fascist ultranationalist party and power military known for its brutality against Serbs and other eth um, ethno religious minorities. Leader of Utesi, Ante Paveli, died in 1959, and this gave us the opportunity to intervene more directly in Croatia and sideline the Utesi more and more, to the point that they have turned against us and are now waging a guerrilla war against the kingdom. We must quickly move more resources and men to Croatia to crush Utesi. And its fina uh, fanatical followers before they become too powerful. Operation Trollista. Right. Um, basically, everybody that is there. And I don't actually. How many divisions is that? Who are you for? Okay. Fine. Right, um you know these twenty nine. Just gonna create the border. Cause it's inevitable that something's gonna kick off, so we know it's gonna kick off. Tito's gonna pop up at some point. I don't know what it means by these expendable points. Oh, Borman's been named the successor. Uh, the international press is reporting that trips to the Croatian Kingdom, aided by Italian advisor and reinforcements, have begun to carry out Operation Trulista, a countrywide military and police operation, aimed at arresting prominent people associated with, or part of Utesi, Utesa, and eliminating Utesa holdouts in rural areas of the country. Now, Rainer is the operation sometimes rather than guerrilla. Guerrilla as Utesa supporters were informed about the operation in advance and fought back against soldiers who came to apprehend them, resulting in a small scale urban warfare. In rural areas, the situation was much worse. Heavy fighting has been reported in mountainous regions in which Utesa paramilitary groups still control a few hamlets and villages, many of which were either besieged and conquered after brutal combat or simply bombed into dust by Italian artillery fire. Overall, it's difficult to gauge exactly how much Trulista has actually weakened the Utesa. Utesa. While many members of the paramilitary organization have been either arrested or killed, numerous important figures of the organization, including its de facto leader, Yuri Franz. Seem to have a de facto vanished into thin air, especially uh, escaping the grasp of Italian creation forces. Don't think that's enough to stop them. Anyways, rights for refugees. After the end of World War II, Italy and her former German friend have started to drift apart more and more. As the Allies rapidly turned into bitter rivals, in the chaos that followed the economic crash of the 50s, a wave of refugees coming from Germany, largely Jews, and members of other ethnic minorities made their way to Italy to escape Nazi op oppression. Many of them were resettled in the new Adriatic lands reclaimed by. Um, La Tropa, and I've lived there since then. While these communities have integrated rather well into the Italian society, they still lack numerous basic rights granted to Italian citizens. We should move towards granting equal equality and rights to these men and women so they can become children of Rome. Good. So we're going to have equal rights and vetted entry. Good. Umberto Manabria. So you're actually an Italian. How do I spend my points? 
situation regarding German refugees. In the last decade, the political relation between the former Axis powers of Europe, Germany and Italy soared to the point of no return and turned the two allies into bitter rivals. When the economic crisis was rocking the German sphere, Italy was also suffering, but certainly not as much as its northern neighbour. Thus, the Italian boot were a natural destination for the thousands of refugees that sought to escape from Nazi persecution and terror, seizing their chance to flee the grass of Germania in the chaos of West Russian war, the economic crash. Numerous Jews, Roma and Sinti people have even other pers- and even other persecuted groups such as homosexuals fled towards Italy, hoping to find refuge in the country that, while still fascist, was much more lenient than the right towards discriminated groups. The then Minister of Foreign Affairs and now Dus um, Galeso Cano was supportive of Mussolini's decision to give refuge to the escaping masses, and many of them were dispersed across the vast reaches of the empire. However, many still live in refugee camps and temporary structures, many of them located in the reclaimed lands in the Adriatic. Dus has signed an order allocating resources in- to encourage integration an eventual path to citizenship for the German refugees in order to turn them from a burden on the back of the state into a valuable asset for the empire. Nice, the Croatian center stage. Croatia has quickly revealed itself to be a weak spot in our empire with the Utesa becoming an ever greater threat and the Zavno partisans getting stronger with every passing day. The situation might quickly slip out of control if we don't immediately intervene. The autonomy and independence granted through the Croatian government will be further reduced, declaring a state of national emergency and giving supreme power to the card so the cadre of Italian generals and advisors surrounding King Tomislav, an empire is not too different from a chain, and Croatia is the weakest link. We cannot allow it to break. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Wait, what's this? Oh. The cost of political power, influence a nation. We can influence nations. Nice. Operation Tuta. Midnight and, uh, yesterday, Italian troops deployed along the border with Croatia have launched Operation Tuta. Italian armoured columns and troops have marched in Croatia advancing into the Kingdom's territory to bolster the already existing garrisons in several major cities, as well as set up new bases deep in the countryside and mountains of the country. According to the first reports, anti-partisan operations have already started, with sparse fighting in the hills of the interior. Major target of the operation, however, still seems to be the final eradication of the Utesa, or Utesa, I don't know, in the country. International media has called Operation Tintu a second invasion of Croatia, and any pretense that the country had any sort of autonomy or sovereignty is now lost. Everyone can plainly see that the Croatian Kingdom is a de facto is de facto an Italian military administration, currently struggling to contain its numerous opponents. Italian public opinion has been critical of this new development, as many fail to see the benefit of yet another campaign of repression that will surely result in numerous Italian lives being wasted. Mm. Not great, is it? Anyways, Japanese cooperation. While the old Axis alliance is no more, and a relationship with Germany has gone down the drain since World War II, we have always been much friendlier with Japan. As natural trade partners in the Indian Ocean, Italy and Japan have always enjoyed good relationships and good trade, but there's certainly more we can do to bring our two great countries even closer. Yeah, let's be friends, Japan! Dalia Chisa requests more men. The war in Levant is raging on. Governor Dalia Chisa's forces doing all they can to try and hold the line against Turkey's superior numbers. With the Turks putting the might of all of Turkey into the fight, Okay. Uh, seems sheer attrition is starting to take its toll. Already, Ildus has received a number of missives from the Governor General's staff, citing the urgent need for Italian reinforcements. Even the large scale conscription of local troops, the Carabinieri, still form a vital linchpin in our efforts to drive back the Turks, and Dalachese's troops are increasingly, increasingly struggling to plug the gaps left by the loss of manpower. As requests for Italian reinforcements are getting increasingly frequent and urgent, it seems we have to make a decision. Oh. I'll go with that option. Croatia's reliant. Yeah, good. I want everyone to be reliant on me. Trade deals with Japan. To the east, the ocean gleams, shining with opportunity. While our relationship with the Germans might have gone sour, friendship with Japan is still going as strong as it was when the Tripartite Pact was first signed in 1940. Despite the recent troublesome events that shook the two great empires, the most natural solution to reinvigorate our economy would be a renewed trade compact, uh, compact with Japan, allowing us to exchange oil and manufactured goods for cheap resources extracted in the sphere, which will serve to fuel our industrial expansion. A team of diplomats, including representatives of ENI, handpicked by Enrico Mattei, have started to negotiate the exact term of these accords with representatives of the Rising Sun. It seems that an official visit by Japanese Prime Minister Ino 
or I know, is going to take place in Rome soon. Trusted friends are always nice to have. The Dalo Japanese partnership. The economies of Japan and Italy are extremely compatible with one another. The Italians can offer them massive amounts of oil in exchange for Japanese manufactured goods and raw materials from the Sierra nations. By sending closer trade deals, we can increase the volume of goods moved between our uh, respective sides of the Indian Ocean, therefore increasing our profit margins and the amount of money we'll be able to invest in our empire. More trade is always good for us, and we have more than enough oil to spare. Yeah, we might actually try and... Uh, could you imagine if we could join the Copa Spirit Sphere? That would be hilarious. War shall reveal the true state of the Japanese military. Hmm, interesting. Sun sets over Rome, its rays playing with the branches of the cypress uh, cypress trees that line the Appian Way. The cobblestone road seems to stretch internally in the, in the hills that surround the city, as it once did when Roman legionaries, merchants, peasants, and emperors walked along it. Now that Ape and Tika is much more quiet, and only two people walking on it, talking quietly in a perfect French, the language of diplomacy, after all the fanfare, the politics, and the crowds, the dust proposed a tranquil walk along the uh, Roman ruins of the Appian Way to include the last day of the Japanese Prime Minister Hiroya Hiroya Ino um, Ino's official state of visit to the Italian capital as some of um, saccades is heard faintly in the background Kino and Aino find themselves more and more involved in their informal conversation which started from personal themes such as taste in music and theatre probably took much more melancholic undertones as the first stars began to appear in the evening sky, two men realised more and more that perhaps, even if separated by oceans and continents, they are not much different from each other. The burden of ruling empire on the brink of catastrophe, threatened by outside enemies and torn by internal fighting, the extenuating task of being forced to commit every more morally dubious act of uh, repulsic politic, the ever-present terror of the possibility that in the end it was all for nothing, such things cannot be easily shared, but perhaps in that Roman sunset, as the Cicadas sung, two men found peace, even if it was just for a passing moment. Well, that's nice. Unlikely friends. As a result of the renewed Italian-Japanese partnership, Japanese Prime Minister Hiro Ino has been invited on an official state visit to Rome. Uh, Kino is quite the charmer, and he's already preparing to make sure that this visit goes as smoothly as it could. The most refined entertainment, the most exquisite food, the most sublime music, the most elegant dresses, and a glass of our best wine to accompany it all. Concerning the Indus is a famously well-spoken and cultured man, so it wouldn't be surprising if a genuine friendship blossomed between Kino and his Japanese counterparts. That would be nice. Okay, that's still ongoing. Yeah, let's evaluate the leadership of that. Could they develop Algeria? Oh, a new expert for the nuclear program. In order to carry out the state's instructions, a servant must be a number of things. Knowledgeable, ideally, about the subject itself and the administrative politics around it. Able to lead and work with others, certainly. But above all, a civil servant must be loyal. For this reason, we have removed the previous project leader for the Italian nuclear program, giving him an appropriate position to keep him quiet. The new lead is as apt as the previous, but his political commitment to the government is far superior, and in making use of his services, we can drive the project of nuclearization forward and much better. Welcome him aboard. That was buggy as hell, wasn't it? Improve a rack. Oh yes, I forgot the racks with us right now. Nagasaki Trade Compact. New commercial agreement was signed today in Nagasaki by Italian diplomats with representatives from Japan, Manchuria, China, Yangdong, and several other nations in the co-prosperity sphere. Perhaps in an event not attracting as much attention as naval exercises of the state visits, it however far exceeds them in importance. Both nations stand to benefit from the new trade compact as it allows freer circulation of goods in the capital in the Indian Ocean, thus linking this vital, the vital resources possessed by the two empires. Here's the profits. Let's finish off the today's episode with these last two little focuses here. The Regina Marina and the Imperial Japanese Navy are two of the most fearsome fleets and now sail the world's wide oceans, and the respective spheres of influence encompass opposite sides of the Indian Ocean. By working together, the, the, these mighty navies can ensure peace and order in the Indian Ocean by stamping out piracy and policing in the high seas. As a sign of friendship, the Regina Marina and the IGN will uh, conduct joint military exercises and drills. Not only will this strike fear in the heart of our rivals, but it will also give us important insight on how the world's foremost naval power, superpower manages its navy. Actually, guys, you know what? I've seen the time on this episode, and uh, we are going to go ahead and leave it there. So, yes, a lot of reading and not a lot of action. 
But that's the case with DNO. It's what we love about it. It's just the reading simulator. Anyways, guys, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I shall be back on Monday for another episode. Until then, take care. Cheer bye. Then out.